Hello, everybody. Anyways, as you know, I spent... Oh, yes. Welcome to Social Alchemy Project Access Management. My name is Tyler Lord Hamilton, and I'm a gay man. And, like many, I've undergone times of being bullied harassed. I mean, I can get into it. Um, some man with a PhD um, used to be next door neighbors to a celebrity that you grew up knowing in the Hollywood Hills. Now has property behind Hearst Castle. Sent to me in the Central Coast, California. Living right next door to some mountains that he owns around him. And next door is uh, Barbara Streisand and Josh Brolin. So this fellow has this amazing place that comes out of Architectural Digest. And I'm not going to explain any more about him, but he, he has his doctorate degree from UCLA. And I thought he was amazing. And so he had taken me on some expensive dates and... You know, he had more going for himself than I did, I thought. So he raped me by coercion. The coercion and the luring was the expensive dinners. I told people about that. No one really seemed to care. Um, I don't know if it's because I seem fuckable. You know, my eyes, you can tell I have anguish. You can tell I've been through stuff. Uh, girls used to kick my shins walking home from school, bruised, and there was domestic violence uh, growing up. And so I have a lot of residual pain. And so what I did is I stuffed it down uh, with drugs and alcohol. And I have two DUIs, and I've been in jail. And I understand AA. And it's scary because, you know, 50% of all murders involve alcohol. And according to Jordan Peterson, psychologist and professor and author from the University of Toronto, he's amazing. Jordan Peterson, check him out. And it's like Frederick Nietzsche comes alive from the dead. This is an amazing, amazing expert. So, you know, my coming into my pain was when I reached, well, the police basically rescued me. My Republican friend, I'm, I'm normally on the Democrat kind of values type of, you know, bleeding heart type of mindset side. Um, don't hate me. But my Republican friend told me the police rescued you and I'll be amazingly stunned if my, my old friend would hear this because she's completely rejected me because I'm not good enough and she's the best. And, um, but today we're going to be talking about getting all the, whatever choice of drug you choose. And that could be yours truly cannabis, medicinal cannabis, or recreational marijuana, weed, hash. And it could be, for God's sake, drinking Pepsi Cola or shopping or good sex. We're going to put that, okay, aside, whatever side you're on. Let's just put it aside and let's just look right down the middle. I mean, we're all open-minded, aren't we? We're all open arms and we know about sex. So we're spread eagle on this, aren't we? Meaning the topic is, is up for discussion. And that is that even if you have sober-minded people or not, it's really shocking to learn that a lot of people are addicted to their own hate. And they're very judgmental. And that's not the way the Lord works. None of this that we're in has anything to do with ego. 
And we are not taking ego with us, is what I have really learned. Well, I'm trying to learn. Due to the caste system and the high achievements we make as we socially stratify, such as maybe going to a really great school, and from that we gain, if we have good looks as well, an aspired vanity. Now, this is almost like a dual personality for all of us. I don't care if you smoke cigarettes as one of your addiction, or eat dog food, okay, or bark with your mate because you guys are into some kink. This dual personality of being addicted to hate and then the vanity is not a good mix when you are not getting your way. It is the formula for psychosis, and we all must come to terms with that in our society. When people are addicted to hate, they will go outside patterns to find evil because they get off on discovering evil. Because evil is going to take us into a school of silence. Because through it, we understand our own alerts on our own mental illnesses. Our political system is like a schizophrenic brain, right? It's just going all over the place. So don't get offended if you fall in the category of the mentally ill. Okay, It doesn't mean you're a murderer. It doesn't mean you're a sex offender. It doesn't mean you rob people. You could just live with a cement stone up here called depression or a mood disorder. Okay, we all have a culture of mental health advocacy, mental health conditions, correct? Because we've had problems with guns and we want to get guns off of the shelves and then there's gun laws and people are really confused of where they're going to stand in the future. They just don't know. They're afraid. They don't know, you know, they just don't know. And people are so frightened that they hope that their vanity can open doors of wealth or magical streams of cash that comes down because we're associated with a certain company or our stocks are doing really well. When we locate an evil that It gets us to be really expressive, okay? Because that's what it does. It just opens up every cavity of your, your, your soul, okay? Because you're shaking, but you're lost in this dreamscape of, wow, it's not that bad, and it's very wonderful. You can call it sin, but when you go through that, and you're in it right now, or you've been there, or you're thinking about it, the one question you will ask yourself when you are alone is, what is wrong with me? Why am I getting lost in this type of psychobabble? I mean, I, I got to be up at 6 a.m. for work. What's happening? When you approach the vanity structures, beauty industry, nails, hair, tits, ass, thong, good sex, money, the world, okay, Hollywood. And you have this disruption of evil, even though there's a very fleeting, temporal, transitory, and permanent pleasure given. Got it? We tend to talk non... We tend to talk violent to ourselves. Like, 
I hate myself. Like, this is a good day to die. Or, oh, shit, when you wake up in the morning. Lord, why didn't you take me in the middle of my sleep? Or, what if I get in a car accident while I'm driving? Traffic's really bad today. Or, if somebody's walking on the street, oh, they deserve it. It'll be to their good. We think thoughts that are like punishing, almost reprimanding. And in social situations, we can speak very patronizing to people, very condescending to people. This is all evil. That's why I look into the webcam at you with these bright eyes. Because when you become aware alert, okay, and hypersensitive, maybe you have some mental illness and it loans itself to you becoming hypersensitive, sensitive. pardon me, I can barely even speak. You understand the desperation we all have for nonviolent communication. And nonviolent communication begins up here in you or in myself. Nonviolent communication happens because you know why you're here. You, not everybody has a purpose. They don't know their purpose. So I don't want to say it's because you have a purpose, but it's because you have a respect for right here, right now, with no achievement, no being on, you know, for the audition or making great grades in school. But right here, right now, you're enough. I am not alluding to ego banging you, okay? I'm not going to bang up your ego. But you take this compliment from me and, 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 and accept it as truth with a capital T. And your commitment to my sincere word to you your commitment to it is going to be that you are going to make that commitment to transparency. Because it's 2020 and we're not going to make it unless we have transparency. And that is being nice. And that is really all the perfection we both need. Going outside patterns, that could mean looking at people or answering ads behind your boyfriend or girlfriend's back or affairs or adultery or family wrecking. And this is a way, once you get started doing this, going outside the patterns, and you're not honest with your significant other, or whoever you're living with that needs to know where you're going or what the drill is. Though you're deceitful, got to get over that. Your commitment is to learn transparency. But when you go outside these patterns, okay, they might be shitty patterns. You might need to go outside them to find out who you really are. It creates a merry-go-round effect. And it could be Mind fuck, and you won't know if you're coming or going, and you won't be able to wrap your mind around the fact that you're opening yourself up to a level of creativity, okay, that includes lust, cravings, and a set list of what you need to get off because it becomes very important to you male or female, and the mind clings to anything from your past that's tragic, and that becomes a real issue in the vanity, in the self-hate talk, and you needing to seek out non-violence, education, and speech communication to yourself. Men. traumatized and they're scared to talk to themselves alone 
they get this from their wives, if their wives are a work, hopefully a work in progress. But these men, can't sit alone. I mean, if their wife died or left them, they'd be on the rebound. Okay. It's a type of man, not every man. Now, I'm speaking to, you know, LGBTQ. Q for questioning. So, welcome to find out if this is a culture that is something helpful for you. Men, you have got to stop. Go, 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 go. Have, 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 have. Me, 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 me. Get, 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 get. The more we train our brains not to go there, when this is helping us, like a money hard on, cock and culture, the phallic symbol, how much power we have over people because of this. Okay. We shame ourselves, but we're really mistreating the church of Jesus Christ. Because the church is all about giving. And when you go there needing, they tell you to give and you give out of a good heart. And what happens is you build a relationship with the church and all the church stands for is want, 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 want. And you go home into your secular life, what have you, because you're not a church now, and you have this want, want, and you expect and you demand for God to follow through. Like Texas, if you're a Christian, the bigger your house in Texas, the more God must love you. See, ego, achievement, vanity, hate speech, drugs and alcohol, our vices, none of that stuff we take with us to where we're going. That does not involve tomorrow. You could say bye to that right here, right now. Tomorrow's going to be a totally different day. You want to run to the water and get baptized by immersion. <laughs> you really start seeking Jesus Christ. We are a self-critical society, twisted because of money. Well, if money is the root of all evil, as they say, but I, but I need it and I, I really like it. Why don't we just justify it and say, we don't have love of money because we're not going to be evil. But we sure love what money buys us. It keeps us busy. Keeps us go, 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 go. Half, 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 Me, 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 me. And what that does in business, it creates control over people's what? Psyche. And you all run to marketing and strategizing on how to squeeze the almighty buck the fuck and fuck the buck. It's very simple. When you go outside patterns, take notes and report them back to your wife or your family or your grandparent. I don't care. Our culture has aggression packed into it. When somebody slaps you around, they expect for you to hit them. If you don't have it in your heart to hit them, they get off on having slapped you because why? You're a woman, even though you're a man. In this case, you're a girly boy or a sissy. And that hostility is because maybe one is 
insecure or both are insecure. They are scared of accepting indifference and not being taught to self-defend yourself by punching the person back is probably bad news if you're in Compton or East LA or Chicago, Baltimore, Maryland, or Detroit, Michigan. So we have a compound of Christianity, okay, that makes you guilty, right? For having an erection or being a little wet, okay? We have all that working. Then we have the vanity that pops up because, you know, we're a mess. We need Jesus and we're lost and we're sinful and we're corrupt and we're slapping ourselves around in our minds. And when somebody assaults someone, it's because they can. So how do you create a nonviolent society and a non-aggressive society without using violence and force, correct? And even incarcerating and creating police reports. How do we pass that bias? Men to cry. Allowing the brokenness to be there and not to enter blame. The blaming psychology is huge among gay men. We love to blame everybody who picked on us. This is giving you protective democracy promotion without force, right? It's of course your form of social justice uh, prevalence, right? It's fair, societal. And you're here to prevent leaders from acting corruptly, right? With their money. And the demands for the American dream and needing to own a piece of America at the expense of our moralities, our consciousness, our bodies, because of whoring, speaking to very select social population of certain fags out there. And don't get me wrong, that's not a bad word. I'm a fag. I've been called it to break me. And I just said, you know what? If that's what they're gonna call me, call me it. And call yourself it. But you don't have to act as it. So don't use it as a derogatory term. In America, God's name is money. That is alarming. God's name is money. In God we trust, we put it on dollar bills and we use that money in whoredom. That is not the Lord. That is not a pure God. Money is used in prejudice and handing it out to those that are working the approval system because maybe they went to the right school or something like that. This is so important and we want to be considerate of other ideas around getting our lives together <laughs> and forgiving ourselves in ongoing conversation about this. This is not the topic that you're going to pull out for your friends at the tennis club or the golf club or the baseball team or the gay men's chorus in Washington, D.C. 
but arising the subjects right here, right now is part of your leadership training. It's part of you being a focused, pointed servant leader, unblemished. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about the evil, right? Now, a lot of people would say, well, you just need a different attitude and just change your life. Correct. But you need to forgive yourself. And not just to forgive yourself in five minutes and then go back into a pattern, but to know right here, right now, you're enough. And when you have eyes to see that self-compassion, mindful self-compassion, you exude compassion to other people and you don't talk to them, you don't intimidate them, you're not two-faced, you're not overreading people. You're not out to molest the public. You're not, you know, by your fashion. You're not out to be a whore. Okay. If you are all of these things, that's fine. That's up to you and your consciousness and maybe the police department. But for 30 years, I threw my eyes into the streets looking for love, correct? In all the wrong places, but found a lot of meat. And it kept me locked into the streets. And I was in denial about it. But looking back and now being educated, and my celebrity, the facts are forgiving yourself for what I may have contaminated in myself or the deceit that follows now because I'm going back to my real life and everything is compartmentalized and I can't tell my 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 whoever I, I love or my job I work for uh, why I come in late on Thursdays you know this this must create a school of silence for you I'm not telling you to shave your head and to burn your resume and to wear orange so you become a swamiji What we do for something and someone involves time and our soul growth. And to look at the things that linger in our minds because people out there are, they have very unloyal thoughts to one another. And if you knew the fantasies that people have in their head, you would be shocked. A friend in LA told me that. He's a poet. People out there think about hurting people. people I'm a gay man. I know what I'm talking about. People out there intentionally want to give you HIV. Okay, la, 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 shock rock, it sounds funny. It's the truth. People out there get off on corrupting people, using their money, and what their ego teaches people to believe about them so they keep control. Jesus doesn't work that way. When we transcend, there's not going to be exchange of money. in the new sacred geometry and the laws of nature or what is, I don't know, we call it nature. 
heaven, you've got to get your money ideal out. Because the sooner you can, I'm not after your money. The sooner you can do that, the quicker we can band together and really address homelessness as our issue. It's not my issue. It's not your issue. It's our issue in an ethical, welcoming, collective consciousness, hopefully using a masculinist theorist approach that I'm trying to create in the social and behavioral sciences. Men are awfully cruel to one another. They pimp each other out if one is femme, and they treat the other one like, and it's not a ladyboy, uh, phone bone, adult conversation, no. I have seen things that I shouldn't have seen, and I just accepted it. And many occasions, what if people were being trafficked? I didn't, sexual trafficking, human sex trafficking. So we have nothing to boast of. Okay, we need to just chill. I understand integrity, I understand honor, I understand pride, I understand achievement, yours truly. But being proud and critical because we don't know anything and therefore we're arrogant tells us that we are really not allowed to speak. That's way, way, way humbling. And in a way, we've already taken in any disease that was intended for us to harm us as a mankind project or a gay straight alliance. Are you following my mind? This is probably one of the most, to myself, life-changing talks because we have victims and we have a culture that says, stop playing victim. And we have people that have not processed or gotten through their trauma and their hurt of being bullied and they're very insecure and they're hurtful to other people. And they say things they really don't mean, but they do mean it. And maybe if somebody wants to take the torch on this, and create a victims of an, a vic, not to put in dentures, I can barely even speak. <laughs> put a victims anonymous group out there. Or I was even thinking, uh, you know, you probably have to work with law enforcement on this, but perverts anonymous. I mean, who wants to go out and say I'm perv on the corner? I mean, I'm not in Hollywood. I mean, I've seen, I've seen a lot. So anyways, but Give yourself the physical pardon, okay? Because all this conviction and all this anger and maybe built up hate toward a message I'm giving, okay? Supposed to dissolve into love for you because it is about you and it's about your applied logic, right? It's about providing a newfound idea that gets you ahead. So in this talk, we've covered hate, vanity, we've touched on those things, and these are things that will be threaded through some of the other talks because it's so much manufacturing us, you know, and we want 
a nonviolent society. And we can have a nonviolent society if we lift some of the pressures from off of our shoulders and what we're going through. And if you're going to any of your vices as escape, and you need to come out of the closet about that, and that could be glory holes that in adult theaters that might be illegal, but you might have to talk to your police department about that. <laughs> but really, on a very serious note, on you checking yourself, forgive yourself and find a therapist that will work with you and you work with them on what wellness looks like, correct? Without depending on ego, centrism. And I think that could arise from your pain and you putting a name on it and pitching responsibility by owning it. And finding that it's okay to say you're not perfect. In fact, more people are needing to say that. And that you find perfection in the imperfection. Come as you are, no perfect people allowed. Love the unlovely, be friends with the friendless. And we're looking at the, the cup half full, not half empty. And you're not only enough, but you're more than enough. I mean, this is plenty of self-esteem you need. And check on the ego. And lastly, what I'm just trying to pop out of my mouth is take pause and find a silent retreat or begin looking at a very sincere school of silence. And get that truthfulness really forward and let people know right it, 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 I can't even talk. It's not even my dentures. Let people know about your heartache. Let people know about your pain. This is going to help gun control. It's going to help avoid homicides, suicides, uh, mistreatment of animals, abuse. If you're under pressure and you can't take it, okay, and you're just mind fucked, find somebody qualified and get yourself help. in this moment of silence and facing ourselves. And you know, I think I spent eight years to be, to be a trained psychologist and I, I, I couldn't make it. I, 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 I became a basket case. And you know, we all have our our dream, and sometimes it could be our idol. If it makes you crazy, slip out of it. And you don't have to always have the best. If you've been given the best already, right here, right now, practice that gratitude, that sincere spiritual practice of gratitude. Really. And I know you are, but at the end of the day, we don't need that, those credentials and that debt. And I don't know, we don't need really to create places that say we're allowed to be allowed to have a job. We're allowed to have a certain profession and make a certain amount of money. And, you know, we don't always need what we think we have to get. 
you know, if it makes us insane, you know, I, I know that there's a student at UC Berkeley and she committed suicide. She went crazy in her PhD program. So, I mean, if you're in a PhD program at any great school, you know, you don't have to stay in that program. Now, I wasn't suicidal in my program. I just found out because I'm gay at the Christian school, a rug is going to slip from underneath me. But if you're in any kind of program or any kind of lifestyle or any kind of vices or any type of ideal, like where you have to move because where you're at sucks, just be silent and see what you have going for yourself right here, right now. And it's so much more probably than homeless people on the street. And by our silence, we're going to create a plan to help end homelessness and definitely poverty mindset. Take it easy on yourself. And if you fail at a school, that's okay. Don't lose yourself by anger. That's all I have to say. Don't hate me for saying these things. We're just bringing society forward, right? Please do that with Social Alchemy Project Access Management. We want a definite developmentalism of our harmonious mankind, right? Don't